Hi, this is Jason here again with another video for EEM 171 codes and installation. And what we're going to look at here in this video is the two major types of wire that we're going to be using in lab. The first one here, this flat cable, is called 14-2 with ground. Okay, and it's the type of wire we'll be using for most of our projects. And let me just tell you what that means as far as the numbers there. 14 is the size of wire, so that's how thick the actual wire is itself, according to the AWG scale, American Wire Gauge. And 2 means there are two current carrying conductors plus a ground wire. Okay, so I'm going to actually strip this cable where you can see those conductors okay I'm going to use my utility knife here to do that okay so inside here okay you actually have three wires and this paper you can just tear off okay. so you have a black wire white wire and bare copper wire okay your black wire is called the hot wire and this is where your current is coming into the circuit through the black wire the white wire is called the neutral wire and that is your common or your return back to the power source and the bare copper wire is your ground wire for protection so these two, the black and the white, are your current carrying conductors and this other third wire is your ground wire. Okay. The other type of wire we'll use for a couple of the projects is this wire here which is called 14-3. Again 14 is just the wire size. Three means with this one you'll have three current carrying conductors, so I'll show you those. Again, this paper you just tear off. Okay, so here three of the wires are the same as what we had with the 14-2. You have the black, the white, the bare copper wire, and with this one you have another wire which is the red wire. Okay, So the black wire still serves the same purpose. Okay, that's still called the hot wire for your power coming in white wire is still your neutral for return bare copper is for ground and this third wire the red wire is an additional hot okay so if you need something that needs two hot wires this will allow you to do that okay so the reason this is called 14-3 is because you have three current carrying conductors Okay, so we'll use this on our three-way switch, our four-way switch, as well as our dual circuit where we have two hots. And we'll also use this on the dry receptacle where we need two hots as well. Okay, so those are the two main cables that we'll be using. The only other one for the doorbell circuit which is smaller wire um, that you'll use for that but other than that one these two are what you're primarily going to use okay so make sure anytime you strip these cables on your wire strippers to select the proper wire size if you can see that or not so we've got 10, 12, 14. 
So we want to make sure on our wire strippers we always use the size for the right size wire. Okay, if you go too big, um, it'll be hard to actually strip the wire. If you go too small, it will cut into the copper and actually break off the wire. So you don't want to do that. So you want to make sure you do the right wire size on your strippers. Okay. Next, I want to go ahead and show you about making connections with these wires um, using wire nuts. Okay, we have a few different type here. We have some red ones and yellow ones. Pretty much what we'll use is just the yellow ones. Um, but if you had to do you know, three or more wires, you would only use the red one. But if you need to connect two, two wires together, which we'll do in many of the projects, say we need to tie the two neutrals together, like if we're wiring to a switch, a switch doesn't require any neutral wires, so we just can tie those together to go on to our light. So to strip the wire again, make sure you use the right gauge and you strip about half an inch or so, no more than that. Okay, and do that the same for both of them. Okay, then to make the wire connection, you want to get them lined up where they're even with each other. and then place your wire nut on there and tighten those up Okay. then to make a good solid connection what you can do is take your side cutters and actually tighten that further just to make sure that you got a good solid connection and the wire nut doesn't just come off for some reason okay so when the wires start twisting together like you see here that means you've gone enough okay you don't need to go any further with that okay the other type of connection we'll be doing is making hooks okay to actually connect to our different devices and I'll show you an example of that so when you do that say we need these two hots to connect to something we'll take the wire and strip about three quarter of an inch okay on each of those No more than that right there. Okay, and then we're going to make a hook. So we're actually going to bend the wire around. There's two different ways you can do this. You can loop the wire in here and twist it. Or you can use the end of the strippers and do that as well. Just a personal preference on which way you want to do that. I vary just based on the mood, what hits me. So uh, you just want to take your strippers, come down quarter of an inch and just twist that around okay just like that I'll take my other one okay and what you're looking for here is basically for the end of that wire to be not quite even a little above where the insulation is so when you bend that around you want that to be about where it's at okay because if you go too far down then you'll have bare wire sticking out and that can cause a short you don't want that but you don't want it to be too far up here where it's not wrapped around the device and let me just grab 
antibiotics. So here I've got just a receptacle. I'm going to wire it up just to show you how that works. Put my screwdriver here. Okay, so I place the hook around the screw. Okay. And just tighten that down. And you always want to make sure that the hook goes clockwise with the screw. Okay, so just like I have it, this way when you tighten down, which is clockwise, the wire hook will tighten with the screw. Okay, if you go counterclockwise, this way, it'll actually cause the hook to spread apart and not make a good connection. So you always want your hook to be clockwise with the screw. Also, what you're looking for here on the insulation, you, know, you don't want it to be where it's up under this screw because this can get hot when it's being used. So you want to make sure insulation is stripped back, but you don't want it stripped back way down here because it could make contact with something else inside the box, possibly this ground wire. Okay, so about here's what you're looking for no further back and not much further up okay so that's how you make your hooks and attach those to your device okay all right so that's our wire and how to make connections with that wire okay so that's all for now